Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, hoes? We are here today to talk Seeking Sister Wife, which yes. Beatrice just told me before we turned on the recorder that this is the fa- your favorite show that we're currently watching yeah because i just fucking love it i think everybody on this show is crazy i love all the couple dynamics there's so much to talk about especially with garrick and fucking danielle i mean but all of them and i mean shane and ashley like all of them i've got some things to say about yes. these relationships and the thing that strikes me is that it feels way more authentic than seeking brother husband i mean it's yeah. still somewhat scripted I'm sure the producers are still in there stirring the pot, but it just feels like these are real couples who are actually trying to bring in partners. It's interesting. Oh yeah. Way more interesting than seeking brother husband. Yeah. So fucking weird. And you could totally tell the ones that are just doing this to cheat Mm -hmm. like Garrick. All of them. I mean, pretty much all of them. Which ones aren't doing it to cheat? (laughs) I mean, some of them seem like they have a good set up. Nick. The Davis family? He's wanting to cheat, honey. Well, yeah. He's but definitely wanting to cheat. The it's, women seem happy with it. Yeah, I, I understand. But it, it, I do think it's all sexually driven. I mean, Totes. we were introduced to a new couple in this episode where the wife comes from a polygamous background because she had a father who was some sort of a religious man who searched the Bible for scriptures to justify his need to cheat on uh-huh. his wife. Yeah. Um. But that's the only remotely religious inclination that I find in the show is that one woman. Everybody else just wants to fuck. Oh, for sure. I mean, they've had religious people before, like on prior seasons and stuff, and it made a little bit more sense. But of course, they get rid of them every time because they're not as interesting if they're just a bunch of Mormons or whatever. Right. I I find that interesting. I mean, yeah, I would like a little bit more of that. Yeah. Because we're from the Sister Wives, Plathville, fundamentalist side of things. Of course. So I like to peel the layers away but in short we're digging it yes hardcore now before we get into today's episode of seeking sister wife we just want to remind you please had your wife and had your kids we are a politically incorrect podcast which means we say bad words we have controversial and sometimes dumb takes get over but we it. love it we're not going to apologize for it yeah. and so if you are down to party in the dumpster welcome to this dumpster and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at rally dtv grinch and like we said join us on patreon that's where the party is man lots of content patreon.com slash reality tv grinch and for those of you watching on youtube thank you so much for joining us please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe all of these things truly help us to grow and we appreciate it thank you in advance thank you all right let's get into this episode we are in season five this is episode three entitled seeking something real (laughs) what is that in reference to real that i can feel in my loins yeah up in my pants yeah we start this episode with your favorite and mine (sighs) the merrifields i.e garrick and Danielle. Now, just to refresh your memory, Garrick is a translucent person <laughs> who wears wife beaters and who is a sex pest. Uh-huh. Danielle is a doormat who, for some reason, believes that she's doing this for a spiritual reason. She's brainwashed, dude. Does she really believe she's doing this for a spiritual reason to please God in her ministry of suffering and loneliness? Yeah. I think Garrick convinced her that it's a spiritual reason. God told them to be polygamous. Wow. So that's Danielle. And they've got two sons. And as you might remember, last season, Garrick and Danielle were courting Roberta from Brazil. Well, that didn't work out. She stole 10,000 doll hairs from them. And now they're courting a new girl also from Brazil Uh who looks a lot like Roberta. Yeah. 25 year old Natalia. Ugh. Last we were with them, Natalia was unable to get on her flight from Brazil to Cancun. Yep. But apparently that worked out because in this episode, she's arriving with her mother. What did you think? Yeah, this was cringe as fuck. I was like, wow. Okay. They said that magically some IT guy or something at the airport producer was able to get her passport and her documents or something and get her to Cancun. So stupid. But they all arrive. 
at the villa that they rented for everybody. Now they arrive at the hotel first. Yeah. And the only reason I mention this is because Garrick, Danielle, and their two sons right. go down to the hotel lobby to receive Natalia and her mother. And I'm just like, couldn't we just wait? Couldn't no. Natalia come in and then we could go and have some dinner, some cocktails to see how the vibe is in person before you expose your teenage sons to this new woman no. that, Garrick, you just want to fuck? Yeah, no. <laughs> they don't care. They're literally exposing their kids to this. They did, th they did this with Roberta, too. They met Roberta. They got attached to her, apparently. They were calling her stepmom. It was like a whole fucking thing. And now they're doing it another with another chippy. Now she's 25. She's only a little bit older than their teenage sons, which right. is so cringe. Right. It's very, it's very weird. It's gross. And Danielle's just got this fake smile on her face, mm -hmm. just being like super welcoming and so accepting of it. And she's like, Natalia's so cute. She's I'm so pretty. I'm so excited. I can't wait to have my sister wife. Meanwhile, she's dying inside. Oh, 100%. And how weird for Natalia, some 25-year-old girl. So she's younger than you. She's uh -huh. my age. My yeah. age, 25-year-old Natalia. To like not just be greeted by Garrick, but also his weird wife, doormat wife, mm -hmm. and then his two kids. Well, and you got your mother there. This is all very strange to me is what I'm saying. It's super fucking weird. And then Natalia in her talking head says that she's been talking to both of them. So I guess Garrick was the one that reached out to her first on the dating apps, the Christian dating apps, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then Danielle was the one. Christian dating apps? Well, I'm lying. Okay. It's <laughs> definitely not Christian dating apps. It's like Tinder like, or something. Like how do they meet though? Like, how do you recruit polygamous partners for your weird sex cult? Well, you could do that on any dating app. When I was on the dating apps, people were approaching me all the time in relationships so and hot. polygamous. Ew. Ooh, so hot. <laughs> Ew. Really? To like bring you in as a third? Oh my God. All the time. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's been so long. Yeah. It's been way too long <laughs> for you. Um, no, but like all the time. People would be calling, messaging me and being like, hey, yeah, I know you're a lesbian, but do you want to join my straight marriage? <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> thanks. It's just weird. I don't even know how this happens. And I'm just trying to put myself in the point of view of Natalia. Like, how are you feeling? Like, you're a young girl. You're coming to a new country. You're, like, courting this couple. I don't think you've done this before. Mm -mm. You're bringing your mother. She's probably traditional. It's just wiggity fucking whack. Green I'm card. Just like, and all Garrick cares about is getting that ass that's it like as the day progresses because they do <clears throat> move from the hotel they go to this beautiful tricked out villa because garrick and danielle are rich they make money they're rich and the entire time like garrick's petting her he's touching her hand on the leg Ew. hand on the arm i would have like beat him with brass knuckles until he died. Oh, I sure. want to do that right now. I know. I, mean, I sent you a message on WhatsApp threatening his life and I had to delete it. Yeah. I'm like, I, this is inappropriate. But like I something thought that's what it was. about him makes me fucking crazy. Like I would break his fucking little spindly <laughs> wrist. Well, because My he's a piece guy. of shit. <laughs> I, I can't. He's a piece he's of a garbage. He's a sex pest. He's yep. a fucking predator. How is this not sex trafficking? I mean, it literally I mean, it kind of is. I mean, I, I guess she's consenting so it can't be officially sex trafficking but like how is this it's only different by degree yeah it's really gross mm -hmm. 100 percent. and i don't know what natalia's end game is i'm pretty sure it's just a green card it's probably just to get into america that's how it always is with mm -hmm. these girls but she's sitting there saying shit like garrick's so handsome i just love his uh, eyes what? i'm like really are we looking huh? at the same person he's not even there he is so vacant i think i said it in the last pod he is only animated by his lust and his desires for sex yes and just to remind you his own family i believe has disowned him because he's a fucking predator sex pest yeah because this is inappropriate yeah he's a fucking and now girl. he's modeling and demonstrating that to his two young sons i, know. I mean like who are they going to become dude i don't know people online call garrick like a sociopath or a psychopath mm -hmm. because he's just got those dead eyes yeah like it's so fucking weird and i'm like your teenage sons are getting to that age of like maturity they're starting to think about girls or guys or whatever they're yes. into and i'm like now you're teaching them that this is what relationships should be like what are they going to turn into? Are they going to be fucking freaks too? Now they have access to the internet mm -hmm. and porn and all of this mm -hmm. shit. And I'm like, oh God, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think he's either raising 
deeply disturbed young men who are not going to know how to integrate into society as stand up men and or he's going to be raising dudes who are just like my father was a sex pest and I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to be good to women. I'm going to learn how to do that. But like Danielle's not teaching them how to treat a woman. She's allowing this fuck up to treat her like shit in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that's what's so cringe crazy. about it. Yeah. They fucking made an Instagram live like two days ago and they posted it on their IG and literally every single comment on there is telling Danielle, leave this creep. Like he's a fucking perp. He's disgusting. He's not doing this for the right reasons. Like you're totally manipulated. This is not godly. Like everybody's calling her mm-hmm. out and she's just ignoring it. And like on the IG live, she's got such a weird vibe about her like she's like laughing and and playing it light and i'm like you're delusional like you're literally just telling yourself this and laughing it off like you're not upset by it Mm -hmm. but your husband's cheating on you with all of these young chippies from brazil right and you're just allowing it like what's their sex life like is it non-existent Uh, or maybe they're freaks maybe they're freaks and maybe she's like trying to give him everything he could possibly want just so that she could keep him around ew but like he is motivated so carnally because like when we get to the cenote right they're going to go to this pond or this beautiful place they're all going to swim and we see natalia in her bikini and Garrick says something like, ooh la la. Yeah. Like, ooh, she's so beautiful in her bikini. And this is when his touching of her really ramps up. And I'm like, if you were doing it for Jesus because you thought there was some purpose to adding women to your family and children and populating our planet with Christians, like you wouldn't be saying shit like that, um, making comments on her body, comments on her bikini. Like, you're gross. And for Danielle to allow it, like, I don't have any respect for her. So if she's on a live and everybody's calling her out and she's just going to pretend like everything's okay, like, then fuck her. Yeah. No, fuck for her real. For sure. Yeah. She replied to a couple comments of people being like, this is really crazy. Like, where the fuck does it say in the Bible that your husband should be allowed to cheat on you with Brazilian chicks? And she's like, it says it right here. Or like, she'll comment weird stuff like that. Like, no, it's in the Bible. It's fine. It's like, no, it's not. You're literally fucking delusional. Yeah. I'd like you to sit down with somebody who actually knows scripture, like me. Yeah. And like, who's not some freaked out fundamentalist evangelical person, but who could have a conversation with you about why it's something that's not legitimate. Yeah. But like, she's scared to do that because she's trapped in a terrible marriage. And I also feel bad for her, but like, she's facilitating his sex pestiness yes it's super weird and did you catch the comment like when they were talking about the villa and they were talking about the sleeping arrangements like natalia is sleeping with her mom in the same room and garrick and danielle are sharing their own room danielle and her talking head tells garrick no hanky panky right and he's like well yeah unless Uh there's a promise or commitment for the future right i'm like you're a fucking piece of shit Yeah. And how is that supposed to happen? Like she's meeting you in person for the first time. And are you expecting her as a 25 year old young woman to make a life commitment to you, your wife and your two sons right now? Like that's unreasonable. You really just want to fuck. Oh, yeah. If I get any sense that she's down to be committed to us, then we can get it on. And it's just so cringy. So at the Cenote... Natalia doesn't want to get in the water because there are bats, which is fine. This (laughs) is a nothing burger. But I did notice in Danielle's talking head around this scene, she's just like, you know, it's kind of weird. I'm disappointed. I would have wanted her to like participate in what the family was doing. And frankly, you know, by this time when I had met Roberta, like the vibe was different. We were getting along so much better. I felt like I knew her and I had a friend. So she's feeling an absence of that click in. And she's bummed out about it. But yeah. I'm like, it's literally day one. I know. It's literally day one. Day two? Yeah. Well, that's like probably her expressing how uncomfortable she is with this whole process. Like it's way too fast. It's only four months after the whole Roberta thing came up. He made her a fucking ring, wants to propose to her on this trip, the first time meeting her in person. Like she's obviously so uncomfortable. Yes. 100%. She's uncomfortable. But is Garrick going to respect the fact that Danielle's uncomfortable? Like if she expresses to him, hey, I'm not vibing with her. I don't think she's a good fit for our family. He's not going to respect that at all. Mm -hmm. He's going to be like, well, 
God still told me I need to propose to her so I can bang her. So we're going to do it because we're going to honor God's word. And right. your word doesn't mean anything. And that's the problem that I'm seeing kind of across couples. Like we see this with Shane and Ashley, with Shane being like, yeah, it's a no from me with Grace. And so it should be an automatic no for you. But all Ashley is saying like, well, I'll take that under consideration. No, bitch, you're in a marriage. Yeah. This is your primary relationship. If it's a no from him, it is a no from you. So it's just like... People trying to take advantage of other people. Yes. And the weirdos that allow them and facilitate that. Yes. They're all great examples of non-ethical monogamy. <laughs> like, yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to ethical non-monogamy. Wait, did I say that right? Yeah, non-ethical monogamy. It's not ethical what Garrick is doing. Non-ethical non-monogamy. Non-monogamy, yes. Yeah, that's what right. I meant. That's right. But same thing. You yeah. know, it's like, it's not the same thing as like seeking brother husband where if they were actually honest about the whole premise of the show that they were all polyamorous people and they were all getting it mm -hmm. and they were all enjoying it and then we could actually see examples of that it would be more interesting but with these fucking people mm -hmm. all these women are getting gypped they're just letting their husbands cheat on them and i don't understand it i don't either i really don't either um but we'll continue to watch oh yeah i do know that yeah so uh the merrifield family ends um like at the end of the cenote day and Garrick is standing over um, Natalia. I'm just like watching him. I'm my I'm fucking my eyes on you, Garrick. I'm watching what you are doing. Standing over her, kind of in an intimidating way to me. And she's sitting on the couch. She's tired. She's like, yeah, I just kind of want to go to bed. Is that all right? Can we just go to sleep? And he's like, yeah, baby. Petting her, touching her. Shows her to her room. Continues to touch her. And this is where she gives like a, a to the camera interstitial and says, you know, he... Um, is massaging me all the time. He's very affectionate and I think I love him. Yeah, okay. Like, oh my God. Okay, really? Just because he touches you and wants your punani doesn't mean that he loves you or knows how to love, uh, nor should you give your heart to somebody who just touches you and you think that's affection? Ew. I don't get it. Now, do you think she's like just young and naive and actually in love with him or do you think she's just saying that because she wants a green card? I am erring on the side of green card. Yeah. I think both are true. I mean, she is young if she is 25, although people on Reddit are like 25. Really? I mean, There's 35? Maybe 35. Stop. Yeah. I can see sh she's 25, but like, I think she's probably got some innocence, but at the same time, she has an agenda. And yeah. that works for Garrick. So he's like, I'm down. I'll bring you to the America as long as you bang me. Yeah. As long as you promise to commit to me and then I bang you. Right. <laughs> Fucking freak. Totally. All right, moving on now, we have the Davis family. Of course, that's Nick and Danielle and those other two women. I don't remember their names. I'm sorry. Um, and Danielle, as we know, she left the home last time. And mm -hmm. apparently she went and leased an apartment for herself. Like she got away. She's got a new apartment. She needs some space. I need some space to think about what I'm doing. Okay. But she did agree to meet with a producer in her car. And drive around a little bit. And the producer and her have a conversation about like where she's at. What did you think? Yeah, the producer's like, why'd you leave? And she says, I need some space to think things through. And they're like, well, did you say goodbye to the family? She's like, well, only Vera. But then kind she of. starts crying. Yeah. Which I felt. But let me give you some context. Because last season, she yeah. was like this too. She was a crying fucking mess the whole entire time. Okay. A bit of a drama queen. Last season, it was the whole buildup was whether or not she was going to marry Nick because she wasn't cool with, you know, being a plural wife. Like she was uh, okay. kind of on the fence. She had never been non-monogamous before. And so she was like very scared about it. And so she was crying the whole entire time. And then she ends up getting married to da Nick. Okay. So this whole scene to me felt like it was just a producer plot point mm. because they ain't got nothing else going on, which is fine, whatever. Like it's just her crying about having to deal with dating, but I'm sure she's just going to get over that. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to onboard somebody either this season or next season. That's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about because I'm like, you're coming into a family that is already established with two other wives. Yeah. And so it's already a shit show. <laughs> it's yeah. already kind of a different situation that you're going to have to adjust around and make accommodations around. You've got a little girl that you claim to feel like a mother to. You're married to this man well, in spirit. I yeah. guess you're married to this man. Like it, you're already doing something that's kind of 
I don't want to say edgy, but it's different. Yeah. And you know how they roll. You were the third to come into, you were the Christine Brown to come into the family. Maybe she's watching Sister Wives and Maybe. she knows what happens to the third wife. Maybe. She's going to become the basement wife. <laughs> or actually, Christine was the basement wife when Robin came into the picture. But yeah. everything falls apart with the fourth. Yeah. But like, I just don't understand how this is a shock to her. Right. Like, why did you say yes in the first place if this is such a big problem for you? You're already in an alternative family wake up yeah she's hella dramatic but i mean i also try to give her the benefit of the doubt because she's like 24 years old so she's really fucking young and stupid and naive and everything and i mean i can understand being nervous about having to date somebody so quickly like they literally just got married spiritually Mm -hmm. last season you know so it's it's kind of quick but that's how nick davis rolls like he's just gotta have somebody right um because you know he's bored at home alone thinking all day (laughs) <laughs> with the with the child right reading so, his books yeah being a renaissance man growing that big brain i just don't really know what he offers like how what is the what is your siren song that lures in these gainfully employed younger women to want to just orbit around you and give you their money and give you their vagina like what do you got going i mean maybe he's got a big dick maybe his dick game is solid maybe which he of course the box is, maybe it's the box and stuff maybe the sex is great is what i'm saying but like is there anything else uh, no why are these women doing this i don't know it doesn't make any sense i mean i guess they get to pool all their finances together because all these women are working you know so you have three incomes not nicks <laughs> but not his yeah I just don't understand what the draw is, I me guess. Either. I mean, maybe if he was a billionaire yeah. and he wanted a harem of women and he invited me to be a concubine and sure. he, uh, established me in his palatial mansion, I'd be like, okay, I'm getting something out of yeah. this. I'm just wondering what these women are getting out of this. I don't know. I but mean, far be it from me yeah. to judge as a raccoon in a dumpster, honey. <laughs> They're weird. They are strange. Yeah. So we leave off with them with Danielle coming back to the split level in Aurora, Colorado to have a family discussion. Yeah. It's really fucking awkward when they're in the kitchen. Like they're talking about what they're going to grill and other things. But the one lady who's actually the mother, what's her name? Oh, Jennifer. Jen. Won't even look at Danielle. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. She only talks to the other lady. What's her name? (laughs) April. April. She only looks at April. She will not look at Danielle. Yeah. So already it's not a good vibe. No, not at all. Because they're probably mad and they're probably upset and hurt that she just left like that because she didn't say anything to them. And then you're going to go and lease a whole ass apartment. Right. Did she though? I mean, probably not. That's really stupid. probably just a property. To just come back in three days. Yeah. (laughs) Really fucking dumb. They're going to have this discussion next episode. I swear to God, I'm calling it right now. It didn't finish in this episode. Yeah. Because they're outside having a barbecue, eating a salad And Nick is just like, okay, well, obviously we have some things to talk about. Like, you do realize there are going to be other bitches, right? Duh. Immediately, very directly goes right into the the problem in the family. And she starts crying and gets up and leaves. She's like, no, I'm not okay with it. I am not okay with it. And then storms off to the bathroom in the basement level of the split level. I know. That's what I'm saying. We're going to finish it out next episode. And then she's going to magically be like, okay, I'll try We'll try as long as like, you know, oh you God. communicate. I swear. So we're gonna just happen. gonna be waiting for the fourth woman because when they introduce a fourth woman, Danielle is gonna lose her shit. Oh, for sure. Oh yes. Yes. Well, even April and Jennifer had their own little issues with Danielle at the beginning because, you know, Nick was hanging out with her a lot. He was banging her a lot at the very beginning. I don't know what it's like now, what her orbit has settled into. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's very far away from the sun. Right. AKA, maybe that's why she's upset. Right. She's Pluto, only gets fucked once a year or something. Is she even a planet? No. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. They're interesting to me only because of that dynamic because yeah. Nick doesn't work. He has really nothing to offer these sure. women except his intellect well, and, and his, his dick. dick yeah. Maybe. I mean, and his big fucking 12 foot bed. Uh, well, that's why they got the 12 foot bed. Cause he's Do like, you think they're getting... having orgies. Isn't it a little bit implied or is it just my sick brain i mean i've been thinking that ever since i saw them on the show i'm like why do you all sleep in the same bed though and like how do you rotate like who gets to cuddle nick Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's like they say they have the boom boom room but i'm like well maybe that's just because you want to do it just one-on-one yeah have a different experience maybe there's a lot of group sex i'm just wondering like there's got to be something else no judgment i'm gonna be watching though yeah me too all right 
moving on, I think the next people we are oh, we're the Ryan family yes. from Texas, honey. Oh. Becky and Justin, an interesting new couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the woman, Becky, who comes from a polygamous background. So now we finally have some polygamous representation. Maybe can, she can speak to the dynamics mm-hmm. of a traditional polygamist family. Um, she's been with Ryan since her early teens. They got married when she was 16 and he was 19. Yikes. They have six charons. Uh-huh. We've got four of those charons that are in the actual house. Yep. And... Becky is the one who is really excited to bring on Sister Wives because she comes from this situation herself. Her father was, what, was he a pastor? Was he a religious man? Yeah, they had like a church. And so her father was like the pastor of the church or whatever. And he was the one that believed in polygamy. And so that's what they lived her whole life. And then when she got married to, what's his name, Justin? I can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, Justin. Yeah, Justin. He's so blank to me. He's, he's so super mayo. nondescript. Yeah. Oh my God, he's so he's boring. He's NPC, can hardly see him, could never remember him. <laughs> no, he's yeah. so fucking boring. But she's the one that's like, okay, let's start doing polygamy. Which I'm like, hmm. Why? What's your motivation? Yep. I bet it's because she's bored of fucking him. Really? I bet she's like, we need to get you another woman because I'm tired of you. And you're limp dick ass. Oh God, that's limp dick. <laughs> That's how crazy. Well, they've been married for 25 years, but it's like, and she even mentions it. I would have loved to have sister wives when my kids were little. Yeah. Like when that would be super helpful to me, but no time like the present. I'm like, okay, so you're going to wait until your kids are older. Y'all are older Mm -hmm. and you're going to bring in some young, beautiful woman and you're okay with that. It just seems really masochistic to me. Totally. It's super weird. I don't get it. It's either she doesn't want to fuck him anymore. So she wants to get him some playthings. Or she want to fuck? She secretly wants to fuck. She want to fuck a little bit. Secretly, they all have threesomes and shit. Yeah, but that's not spiritual. No. Remember Mary told us they're not like that. Yeah, it's but. It's not like that. What if they are in their church? I don't get it because Justin doesn't strike me as a very religious person. No, he doesn't seem like he cares at all. No, and he was saying that, you know, the reason he's doing it is to find an ally for the family like well why does your family need an ally though like (laughs) you two seem to be working out pretty fine you've raised six kids like why do we need an ally what's going on you just want to fuck yeah and your wife wants to watch you fuck yeah maybe she's a cook yeah maybe she's a cook oh my god maybe she's sneako in the corner in a chair stop watching them fuck oh my god (laughs) but justin does say that (laughs) <laughs> polygamy is not just about having another sex partner sure he sure, re- makes sure to reiterate that i'm like okay that's the only benefit for you because if you tell the truth everybody will see you for the dog that you are like yeah. but i would respect you so much more if you just told the truth and the thing about becky she's weird to me she's culty vibes to me she's fundamentalist weirdness to me because she's like my father spent a lot of time searching through the bible for scriptures that would justify polygamy and he found them Mm. and my father became a polygamist but my mother was kind of a loner yeah and so she never really appreciated the benefit of having all of these other wives around. Well, I will appreciate it. I'm not a loner. I want to have friends. I want to have sisters, but my mother didn't. So that sounds to me, it sounds very coded, right? It sounds very culty coded as saying her mom didn't want the polygamy. Her father fucking searched the Bible to force the polygamy because he wanted to fuck and the mother suffered for the rest of her life. And now Becky wants to do it why yeah it's super fucking weird her motivation and she's so like eager to do it and like eager to pick up girls for her man when we get to the bar i'm like what the fuck you're so bizarre to me Mm -hmm. and i'm like are you gonna be okay being a basement wife that's why i was like wondering maybe she's fine with it because then she's like cool my husband can fuck somebody else other than me for once Mm -hmm. because she had six kids with him he doesn't look like he's like this amazing lay sexual dynamo <laughs> no, yeah no not, not at, at all. all um they do mention that they were in a relationship with somebody named stephanie yeah that they dated for like nine months but that she was very anxious about all of this and she didn't think her family would approve and she was in and then she was out and so now they're looking for somebody just like stephanie but who's not dominated by fear which sounds like he thought she was hot and so he's looking for somebody who's hot, but who 
isn't anxious. Yeah. And he specifically said, I love her like I loved Becky. Like he used the past tense. Oh God, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I watched it. Tw- I was like, huh, that's an interesting slip of the tongue there. Like I'm like, maybe you didn't mean to say that, but maybe you don't love your wife no more. Mm. Maybe you're like, yeah, I just want to love somebody else that's hot, you know, and young and between her legs yeah yikes sexually so let's get to the restaurant because Girl. they decide they're going to go out and see if they can find some young beautiful women for that looker justin <laughs> who's looking for a, a, a girl and they get to some dumbass nondescript restaurant bar Applebee's. where there's nobody there except there happens to be a few women that are down the bar and Justin has no game whatsoever. None. He's got no plan. He doesn't know how he's going to approach anyone. In fact, he's going to depend on Becky to be his wingman. And so she spots somebody down the bar. And as soon as she spots somebody, he's like, yeah, let me go get my cards, <laughs> my business cards. Because that's not lame. I know. Can you give me my business card? Maybe you can call me later. Maybe we can fuck. That's so fucking crazy. Jesus cringe. Christ. People don't do that anymore. No. Justin. I know. And he keeps making comments about how he's an old man. I'm like, yeah, you are. Fucking using your phone flashlight to read the menu <laughs> at the bar. I'm like, I, I was like, what's can't. happening here? Why? Because he can't fucking see because he's old. <laughs> Wear glasses. I know. Like the rest of us. Some men are like that, though. Like I used to work at the optometry office. Mm-hmm. Some men don't want glasses because they think it'll make them look old really like you're stupid just wear glasses okay that's bizarre yeah a lot of men are like so he goes out to the car because he knows becky's on her (laughs) way to talk to the beautiful woman at the end of the bar her name is desiree yeah and becky's like hi everybody how are you doing today how are you and desiree's like i'm fine Fine. thank you and she's like well i was just wondering do you think you would like to date my husband and then desiree's like um what <laughs> excuse me what did you see the blonde chick that was yeah, in front? from estonia <laughs> she looks over and she's like what the fuck did i just hear so are these producer plant people are these actual people that occur in nature or were they put there on purpose to facilitate a scene i bet they were people that they picked up on the side of the street and they were like hey do you want to be in a tv show we're not going to tell you what it's about because we want your genuine reaction but mm-hmm. do you want to be in the tv show maybe and of course desiree who's like i'm a director of porn <laughs> <laughs> a director of porn <laughs> That's well, just my theory. she starts like talking to Becky before Justin even comes back in. And she's like, well, I mean, I'm a very selfish person when it comes to relationships. Like I could never see myself sharing a partner. I'm also a divorcee. I've got two kids. Like I come with a whole lot of baggage, honey. And Becky's like, sounds great. We got kids too. I think it'd be fantastic. And then here comes dumbass Justin trundling on over to the women. And he's like, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, he's like, doesn't my wife have bigger balls than me? Isn't she great? Oh my God. So what do you do? <laughs> so fucking I'm weird. I'm a director for a mission trip for or porn. missionaries. Doing missionary? Porn. <laughs> or a missionary? And he's like, oh, do you work out? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a spiritual conversation. That's how I want to open up a potential sacred relationship with somebody I'm going to share a planet with. Um, after I die. Do you work out? Oh my God. No game Sometimes whatsoever. Sometimes I hate men so much. I mean, Me some, too. Frequently I hate men so much. <laughs> Me There's too. a picture of Katie Maloney from Vanderpump Rules yeah. sitting at a bar holding up a sign that says, men, are you okay? <laughs> are you fucking okay? Well, like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, you've not learned any skills. Uh, it's the internet. It has crippled a lot of people. Maybe. Well, he's been married for a quarter of a century, apparently. But like, this is what he brings to... A conversation nothing but then shockingly they're like well would you like to go out with us tomorrow night desiree and she's like yeah i'm available sure i mean there's cameras right yeah so Clout goblin yeah Clout definitely chaser. producer plant and justin is so excited and on the couch justin says something like, yeah we really want this to work out uh-huh. we really want it to work out with desiree so he just wants to fuck yeah you don't even know desiree nope but you're already incentivized yeah i want it to work out i yeah. want to bring her into my family where i have a million children like the way people expose their children to this debauchery i know under the guise of jesusy i know and they think it's fine for their children to be exposed to that and then if anybody god forbid says anything online like hey maybe you shouldn't do that as a parent maybe that's not a healthy relationship to model for your kids you you're a fucking bigot right. oh my god bigotry. it's no. so fucking stupid 
stupid. We're calling it out for what it is, you weirdos. Super bizarre. <sighs> okay, so apparently they're going to go on a date and maybe we'll get to see that. Or I Desiree hope. is going to back out via text and we'll never see her again, <laughs> which is what I would do. Maybe. All right, now and finally, we get to the Sherwood family, which is Shane and Ashley, to just get everybody up to speed. Last time we had Shane sitting down with his wife, Ashley, who is a psychiatrist who has gone to school for multiple years to become an MD, a doctor. Uh huh. And her date, Grace, who had orange drawn on eyebrows and was channeling a higher power so that she could coach entrepreneurs or something. Yeah. So Shane strikes me as a very smart person. Ashley strikes me as a really smart person. (laughs) And I didn't understand this thruple. It didn't go well. Grace was disrespectful to Shane, but Shane also came in pretty hot and was a little condescending when he was asking her questions about her dumb trumped up job. Yeah. Um, And so now we're in the aftermath of that. So that date is over and Shane is meeting up with his friend, Rachel, who comes in with the shortest, tightest jean shorts Daisy Dukes have ever seen. In a bikini top. (laughs) I'm just like, like, lady, what are you doing? Like, oh my God, I'm going to be on camera. I've got to go out and get something that's really fucking hot. So when people see me, like my makeup is perfect. My mug is beat. And I've also got some really great clothes on. And that's what you chose? Yeah. I can see your coochie. I mean. These are Kenya Moore coochie cutters. (laughs) Coochie crack. Coochie yeah. crack. Coochie crack. I don't know if she thought they were going to like swim or something or what, but it was really fucking really? awkward. I mean, like, I people know. make interesting choices. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, she was very pretty. Sure. She would have been more pretty. Yeah. If she hadn't have worn coochie crack, Daisy Dukes, and a crop top. Well, maybe that was for Shane. Maybe, maybe she's got a crush maybe on Shane. Maybe she's the third. Maybe. Maybe Shane's got a crush on her. Okay, let's get into the conversation. Okay. So Shane starts downloading Rachel, who, by the way, I'm hating on, but she was a very nice person and yeah. came with some actual good points mm-hmm. talking to her boy, Shane. And he's telling her about how the date went and she was disrespectful. She's some fucked up weird channeler um, who also condescended to him and said he obviously never got therapy. And so Rachel starts asking the questions I would ask. Like, okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> How are you guys going to deal with that? And he's like, well, you know, Ashley's thinking about it. I mean, it's ultimately her choice. He says something along those lines. Like, I don't like her. I don't want her. But like, I mean, obviously it's Ashley's choice. And I'm like, is it? Yeah, I don't know about that. Is it Ashley's choice? Why isn't it your choice? Aren't you equal? Well, and he's like saying all this to Rachel and Rachel's giving him kind of a look like, really it's her choice but she disrespected you she was a bitch and sh- and ashley never defended you no not at all and then she asks a question something to that effect she's like well what if she ends up wanting to stick with grace even though you don't like her and he's like well i guess that would be a problem then i guess i'd say what the hell <laughs> like, oh, okay i need you not to be a victim doormat and that's the pattern that we see over and over again in polygamy i don't know about polyamory because i'm not familiar with it but like there always has to be a basement wife Mm -hmm. there always has to be somebody who's suffering who doesn't want it who's taking less and in this case it's shane and i actually really like shane me too and i think he really loves ashley yeah for whatever reason i don't get it and i think he doesn't want to lose her because she's bisexual and she may make a different choice and leave the family. Like, I think he's maybe motivated out of desperation around that. But like, dude, don't be a doormat. Yeah. If she's going to leave, what do you want to do? Keep her in a cage? Yeah. Go find somebody who loves you for who you are and it's not going to leave you. For real. And doesn't want to like date other people because he confirmed in this conversation, we speculated last episode, like right. whether or not he was involved with right. the other girls too because of some weird comment Ashley had made and he confirms with Rachel he's like yeah so the arrangement is that Ashley's the only one that's fucking other people why I'm like okay you don't want to fuck watching? other people like yeah it doesn't make any what sense what about you how do you feel about this yeah and like what if your guys' sex life suffers because she enjoys the sex with the girls more and then what do you get right it's really bizarre but maybe he watches Maybe these people all have Maybe weird fucking there's fetishes. there's a humiliation fetish. Yeah, Maybe I don't know. Maybe he's cucked out like Sneeko too. But I just, I feel like, and I, I mentioned it last time, and I do want to apologize because I did think that it was a requirement that whoever she brings in also had a relationship with him sexually. But like, I was wrong about that. I was hearing something different. I was hearing voices. <laughs> but 
I do think that he's motivated by trauma and yeah. by losing this person that he knew in university, like we talked with last time. Yeah. And he's seen this happen before. He knows how much it hurts. And now he's so much more invested with this beautiful woman, Ashley, and it's going to cost him even more if it happens again. And so now he's just reacting. He's not being intentional. He's not being like, you know what? I'm fucking great. And if you don't want to stay with me, I get it. I mean, that's going to hurt, but I can move on because... I'm not going to be a victim right. to your bullshit. Right. But he's 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 not like that. And we see in some previews where he's like, I don't want to be weak. Yeah. Because he is weak. Yeah, he because is. Because he is weak. Yep. And he doesn't want to lose her. And it's really fucking sad. But after this conversation with Rachel and his talking head, he does acknowledge. He's like, well, now I'm kind of realizing the red flags with this whole situation. And I need to talk to Ashley. And then that's when like the next day or whatever. Right, they're in bed. Yeah. But I mean, even that conversation was a little weird, huh? I, I thought it was strange. Yeah, it was a little weird. So the next day, they wake up, they talk about this whole situation with Grace, and he's like, yeah, I'm not really cool with it. And then, what's her face? Ashley <laughs> is like, yeah, I've decided that I'm going to end things with Grace. That's bothering me right there. And she's also like, you know, and I really needed to take time because I wanted to be very thoughtful about what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do anything rashly. And she also says to the camera, but like, I really, you know, I respect Shane's opinion. So I wanted to make sure I have, I'm like, listen, hmm. this isn't, you're not the main character here. No, This is not how partnership and marriage works. Mm -mm. He's waiting for you to make a decision. That decision should have been made. Yeah. Like, I just feel like I'm repeating myself. Like, I the audacity of this woman. And she's like, yeah, I decided that it's not for me. Because, you know, she didn't treat you that well. No fucking shit. Yeah, duh. Nor did you stand up for your husband. You let her not treat him well. Yeah. That's something you did. Yes, it's on you too. And then when she decides to text Grace, she texts her this long fucking paragraph about how they're at different points in their life or whatever. She never once says, I don't want to be with you because you disrespected my right. husband. You weren't kind to my husband who I love. So and you're not being honest. I prioritize and put first, right? Yeah. No, she's just being like as placating and diplomatic as possible because she doesn't want any drama. Stupid. But... Grace ends up responding and she's like, well, thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. It was nice meeting you. Sorry, I didn't get to eat your box. Okay, bye. I want a more spiritual connection right, okay. with somebody. Right. Okay. All right. Right. So that relationship is over. Shane seems relieved and very happy, but like we For have now. a problem because in the preview, <laughs> yeah. we see Ashley sitting down with somebody. I think her name is Sarah yeah. or something like that. And you, the difference in Ashley, like when we saw Ashley and Grace, Ashley was like sedate. She mm -hmm. was like really laid back. Um, she was very, you know, deliberate, not a whole lot of energy. But when we see her with Sarah, she's saying, oh, she's like flipping her hair okay. and like she's wearing a dress and she's looking all cute and giving her goo goo eyes. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. So she's falling for Sarah and Sarah does seem to be into her. And so I think when she brings home somebody that she's actually liking yeah and vibing with and sexually attracted to and shane's going to be on the outskirts of that relationship and we all know how relationships are when you fall in love yep like you don't think about anything else it's mm -mm. going to be interesting to see how shane handles that situation and that's probably why in the preview he's crying about it and he's like i don't want to be weak i don't want to say anything to ashley and it's mm -hmm. like yeah be probably because you hate seeing that yeah you hate seeing that she's in love with somebody else and that's the problem like unless he's getting something out of it unless he gets to watch or he gets to date somebody else mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's a, a fair deal for him because this is the mother of his child right kissing another chick in front of him and like falling in love with this other chick, which is fine. If she wants to be with chicks, it's cool, whatever. But you're already married to this dude. Yeah. Like, and it's to me, it's like, why, why are these people bringing in all of these children into these weird fucking arrangements? So many of which end up not working out. Like, and with the thing with polyamory is like a lot of those relationships don't work out. The yeah. thing about opening your marriage is like that never works works out like it's always drama it's always problems but now you have kids yep. and now the kids are exposed to that and the messages that you're sending to the kids about like who they are and who there will be in relationships are all twisted yeah like i just it's so irresponsible it's super irresponsible and i think a lot of people like genuinely this is just my 
opinion. So don't fucking come at me, bro. I will come at you. Bitch. Okay. No, but I think a lot of people, especially like straight couples and stuff, when they're married and their marriage is suffering, like a lot of people think that bringing in children is going to make it better. Like I've yeah. seen it happen a lot, like especially sure. in my church and stuff where they think like just more kids and stuff. It's like a distraction from the issues within their marriage. But then as time goes on, as the kids grow up or whatever, as things change, the unhealthy marriage dynamics are still there. Yes. It's still suffering. Things are still shitty. And then it always ends. Well, and often children amplify what's dysfunctional in your relationship because now yeah. you have to have fucking routines and you've got to, you do this and I do that and we have to work together. But if there's a fundamental breakdown in the relationship where we're not working together, like how do you think adding children to that is going to make that work? Right. Like it doesn't. Never. But people are dumb. They are dumb. People are super dumb everyone's um, dumb we also see danielle of nick danielle jennifer and april april <laughs> the so, davis family they are so basic yeah um she's having the conversation with them like i don't know they can do it i don't know what's going on i do like her makeup though she does beat her face oh she for sure really beautiful yeah and finally we see garrick getting called out because apparently he is still up on the dating apps. Is anybody surprised? Is anybody no. surprised by that? No. And I love Danielle throwing him under the bus. And she's like, I warned you, dude. I knew that Natalia was not going to be okay with you being on dating apps. And yet you are on them. Why are you okay with him being on dating apps when you're going to meet the next sister well, wife she's in your not. family? I know. Why? But why? <laughs> I'm just like, Danielle, don't you matter, though? No. Doesn't your opinion matter? No, because she tells him. And he's like, no, it's fine. I'm going to do what I want because I'm the man no, of the house. first he lies. He's like, no, I'm not. Well, yeah. And then Danielle says, you're lying. Yeah, to Natalia. Yeah. But Danielle knew she was, he was on him. She tried to warn him before the game. This was a problem with Roberto, too, because he was dating other people. <laughs> In America, no less, when they came down to visit Roberta the last time, and she's like, what? You're dating other people? Like, I thought you were just dating right. me. And then we'd come up to America and it would just be us three. Yeah. I thought that's just how it was going to be. So he's a fucking liar. He's a lying he's liar a who cheater. lies. He's a sex pest. He's a, he's a predator. Perv. He's a sex trafficker. I fucking he's hate fucking him. I hate him too. He's the and worst. And I hate that his wife doesn't call his shit out. Like you think it's funny to call him a liar? Well, you're a liar too. If you know that he's on these dating apps, why are you taking part in soliciting these women and bringing them over to America under false fucking pretenses? Dude, and I want to see his DMs on these fucking dating apps. I bet he's sending so, gross. so many dick pics, so many shirtless pics. All for God, though, by the way. Right. He I made can't. me, he fashioned me, and he formed me in all my glory. So, of course, I'm going to wear a wife beater. <laughs> on a, that's an undershirt. That's I know. something you wear underneath a proper shirt on television. It shows his muscles. Muscles? Yeah. I'm not going to body shame, <laughs> but I really, really want to because he's such a despicable, deplorable person. He's the worst. And I hate him. Ugh. I'm triggered by this guy. Oh, me too. I'm also triggered by Becky. Yeah. And her religious bullshit Her culty well. shit. Yeah. Yeah. But oh my God, thank you for recommending this because yeah. I'm actually having a lot of fun. Isn't it really good? Yeah. You should go watch some of the earlier seasons because there's some other couples on there that aren't on there anymore yeah. and I want to know your thoughts. Okay. Maybe yeah. I will when I've yeah. got some time between my smutty All books. All your smut reading. I got oh my it. God, I'm up to 42 books wow. in 2024, honey. That's actually really good. Yeah. I mean, at least I'm reading something. I'm not just dying in front of a television eating nachos bel grande. <laughs> which I would love to. I mean, that sounds so good right now. But I will give you this. Yeah. I've started reading Smut too. Yeah, you hypocrite. Thank you, Ethel, for sending me Smut. What kind of Smut? Tell me all about it. Of course, it's, it's lesbian like sa smut. sapphic romances. Yeah. With um, vampires. Well, fanfic. Who like to suck. Yeah. You know, vampires inherently, <sighs> innately, they were born to suck. Suck them. And they're lesbian. Yeah, they're lesbian. So they're sexy? Yeah. Oh my God, I love that for you. It's all from Ethel. She's a really? lesbian connoisseur of smut. It's so we funny. We love that. It's so great. And your daughter's reading it too. See? And it's so much better than just dying in front of a television <laughs> the entire real. time. Plus you're like feeding your brain even yeah. though it's like fast food yeah. in terms of literature but it's still it's words i read historical romance and Ooh. they're all like big words i have to stop ask my husband do you know what this word means he's like i don't think so <laughs> and then i look it up and i learn a new word and uh. i feel like i'm getting an education wow so i'm glad you've come to my way of thinking yes for all a smut reading family just hating on me 
Always well, hating on me, honey. I know, I am. Because I live so well, baby. <laughs> you do. Damn. Well, is there anything else we want to say about this show? Any final thoughts about Seeking Sister Wife and these this cavalcade of cantaloupes? <laughs> well, I didn't miss uh, Neem and what's her name? Oh, yeah. Um, Nyla. Nyla, Naeem. Yeah, Sh- I didn't Shibuti. miss them. Sh- Shibuti. Oh, my God. Hadoodie? Uh, Hadoodin? Sam Houdin's or something. Sam Houdin's. I don't know. I don't, that's so rude. I'm Shibuti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call them Mr. and Mrs. Shibuti. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I'm I'm waiting to get back to them because I mean, that he, mom. Is, he is ready. He is ready to lay it low and spread it wide. Yes. And the wife, despite what she's saying, she's like, she doesn't want the woman to be sexy. Oh, she want she's going to flip out. To be desirable. Oh, it's going to get good. I can't wait. Me too. All right. So we're going to be back later this week. We are covering two shows. We're going to yeah. be covering The Valley with Jax and Brittany and Kristen, formerly of Vanderpump Rules, because that promises to be a shit show and we want in on it yes and we're also going to be covering vanderpump rules so look for those episodes out on podcast or of course on youtube and everything plus all the uncensored bits on patreon now is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go beyond wrong well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review (laughs) it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much in advance and until next time please don't forget that really and truly we have nothing but love for you we talk about y'all all all the time how much we love you so don't forget that and peace out bye bye guys